Uh, how's it going, guys? Just figured I'd do some kind of update. Haven't been out here in a little while for many reasons. Car looks exactly the same. Uh, hot water heater took a crap. Some plumbing took a crap. Got the big, big boy out. But here, I want to show this to the chef. This piece of paper represents the trailer. Here's the door on the side, and obviously there's the door on the back. The way we do it is, we get one of those um, countersunk D-rings, and it takes four bolts. Which in reality, I guess it's kind of like that, and it sits flush, and the actual D-ring lifts up, okay? And when you lift up the D-ring, you could hook a nice size pulley to it with a clasp. You know, one of those uh, uh, things that are shaped like this, kind of with the screwing thing, so it makes a link. And basically what we used to do is, just inside the doorway here, I'm going to try it. Just inside the doorway here, we would mount the hitch, not the hitch, the winch, out of your way totally. And you'd have your pulley, pulley hooked here with your D-ring. And you'd run the cable here. Whoops. And then it would come out here. And you could stand outside and either operate it by the cable or operate it by the lever. So you don't have to be inside here anywhere. Because there's not that much room in there to begin with. So you can actually physically stand out here and just reach inside the doorway. So if this is the doorway here, the winch is right like this sideways. It goes through the pulley and goes down. And what's nice is, if you wanted to, man, there's mosquitoes everywhere. You could actually undo that thing and take all the stuff and put it to the side. If you feel this is like in the way, if you want to do something or work on something, maintain something. And you could put this all the way up by the wall. Because if you put your winch up there, unless you have a wire or something, you're not getting up there to winch the car up in there in, that, in the tight area. So that's the way we used to do it. And we used to use those same D-rings and we would mount them in the four corners, well, depending on how deep the trail was. Okay, since it's a short trail over here. And you'd get it up to where you knew was a safe distance. You'd put your X straps in the back. You'd winch it till your X straps were tight. And then you could hook your front ones on or you could bring it all the way to the, you're almost touching the wall. Do your straps till they just touch. Take the slack off the cable and then winch the car back. Was another way of doing it. But the trailers, uh, that we kept using was a 25 foot trailer and the car was I think about 15 feet long so we had plenty of room in the front but still even with plenty of room in the front um, this allowed you to mount this okay either under where the car would be or underneath your cabinetry and just have the cable sticking out so you, when you winch it up it was out and you didn't step on it it's actually a pretty cool idea we came up with it and also uh, this was like I said plated then in this part of the trailer it was recessed with two batteries and they were in floor level so you had to lift the, uh, the floor up if you wanted to get to the batteries so it kept the batteries off the tongue and kept the batteries out of the trailer and the batteries charged to the, the truck when you drove so uh, with that said I am in spackling happiness right now. Um, I had to remove a ceiling and put a ceiling back in. And um, I taped it last night, which I guess is considered the first coat of spackle. I consider that taping. And uh, tonight I put the first coat of stay, uh, spackle on. Uh, so it's going to take at least another two applications to make it nice. Well, non-detectable, how's that? Uh, nice commercial means you could see everything. Nice home means you don't see anything, if you know what I mean. So usually when people are professional spacklers and they do commercial buildings, you still see stuff. Um, you can pick up on sand and scratches, lines, whatever. But usually when they do it for home, it's a little bit better. 
So I just want it to be undetectable again, like it was before I took that piece of the ceiling out, which consisted of a square that was uh, approximately three feet by uh, 41 inches, and then another piece that was uh, 11 and a half inches wide by 48 inches, and they joined together. So if you, you got the square like this, and then this strip coming off it. Obviously done with different pieces of rock. So, which if anybody's rocked, you know that's a pain in the ass. Because you wanna hit this line. You can't hit this line if you just hit this line. So, yeah. But once you get near the end of spackling where everything is just a skim coat, you could whack it and come back 20 minutes later and whack the other direction because the stuff is, is like this thick. You put a fan on it, it dries. So, with that said, guys, um, the rest of this week will be shot. There's nothing else I can do about that. Then, uh, then we'll jump back out of here. So, um, Junior's been involved helping with all this. So, we did the uh, well, the hot water heater died on Friday. Well, does it work? sprung it's a nice leak so Saturday we put the whole water heater in and then uh, Sunday we had a, another issue um, if anybody's ever had a hot water heater fail um, if a hot water, water heater fails that means it failed a couple of years earlier and by prolonging it you're actually adding misery to your life I had the pieces here I threw them out um, this is the hot water heater. Okay, it's made out of steel inside. You got the flame coming up the center and the flame underneath. Okay, they coat it with like a porcelain enamel inside here. Then you got your like zinc or whatever it is, anode in there that's supposed to get eaten away. Well, hot water heaters have a life expectancy. Um, so if it's expected to live, say, 12 years and you have it in there 20, and you're still going strong and you're all happy, basically what's happening is this is flaking away. And it puts the iron up into your pipe, your hot water pipe. Okay, and then it goes up to your faucets. And it does it as you're using it. And when you turn the faucet off, it settles back down. All that iron lays in this pipe. And you know what happens when you mix dissimilar metals, especially iron with anything, It'll slowly eat it away. You get these groats all in the pipe. The next thing you know, you look at the pipe and you got these green spots on the outside. You don't know what they are. They're not lumps. They're just green. Like you left copper outside. Well, that green, underneath that green, it's already grown underneath. Probably about that big. And it's actually weeping. But evaporating. And it causes the pipe to get green. So, um... My hot water heater I put in when I moved in here 24 years ago. Bought a good one, a high quality one. For plumbing supply, my friend was a plumber. Uh, I don't know what the life expectancy was. I know it wasn't 20 years. But, like everything else, you put the house up for sale, it takes a crap. So with that, I did the hot water heater. And then that's when I realized that that pipe. So I did a complete run across the basement until I hit the verticals going up. So, in order to do that, I had to remove a ceiling to do it. And that was fun. So, they can't leave that for the next guy. I'm not that type of person. Not for the additional, like, $20, $20 and a couple hours worth of labor. You don't, you don't do that. And you don't cut out a piece. You don't do whatever. You take out as much as you can of it. Um... So, that's something I'll always be aware of. I never thought of that, believe it or not. Never, it never dawned on me. It never dawned on me that that happens. But it does, and it's, it's quite, uh, uh, quite common, believe it or not. I didn't realize how common it was. It just sucks when you have a ceiling and finished areas. If it was unfinished, that eh, piece of cake. But when it's finished, yeah, okay. Yeah. So 
So with that said, um, I guess that's going to be it, guys. Um, and we should be back on the car. I don't know. I'm assuming like Monday. Um, I have to have everything completely done and painted by the end of Saturday. Um, someone's been trying to look at this house for a week now. And they, and, they, and I'm telling you, we get two phone calls a day. They want to get here. They want to get here. I, I refuse to show it to them the hole in the ceiling. So, okay. We got people home. <laughs>